Hello folks, welcome to this series of AWS services and here we are talking about networking components. In today's video, we are going to talk about route tables. Now all of you must have heard about router. Router uses a route table to understand that how the packets would be transferred. So each route table has got multiple set of routes which basically dictates the path of the packets which are going to the router. So normally in on-premise servers, you have a running router and then you configure your route table. Now in AWS VPC, we have an implicit router, which means we don't see router as a resource. AWS is fully managing that internally. What we can change and what we can configure is the route tables. So the internal implicit router will follow what is given in the route tables. So when you create a VPC, it creates route table by default and that is called main route table. This main route table is a default Fault route table associated with the subnets within this VPC. Having said that, you can create custom route table and you can give various routes in that custom route table and you can associate that custom route table to a particular subnet. So in that case, this new subnet will follow the routes which are there in the custom route table. So you cannot delete a default route table, but you can create a custom route table and you can edit the routes in even in the default route table or main route table. So if you go to the old diagram of our VPC, we can see there could be different route table associated with different subnets. So from this diagram, we understand location of the route table and its significance in the whole VPC traffic. So let's go to our VPC that we created in one of the previous videos and see the route table associated there. So this is my demo VPC. And here you can see there is a route table associated with this. So let's click on it and see its structure. Select the route table. And the main thing here is routes. Now in the routes, you can see that it has got just one route, which says that if the destination is this CIDR block, then the target has to be local. And this is a default route in any route table, which basically tells that if the target is another instance within the same VPC, and that is why CIDR block of the VPC, then connect to it directly. So that's one default truth that you'll always get, which would include CIDR block of the VPC, and then for that the immediate target would be local. So let's go and see other route tables here. So though that was a default route table, here we can see that there is another route table as well. This was the custom route table which was created by that VPC wizard. Now here you see other than the destination which is local to the VPC, it has got another destination, another route for the destination which is for any IP address and there the target is internet gateway. So let's understand this concept that whenever you are using a new VPC gateway or internet gateway or NAT gateway or some VPC peering connection, you need to add a corresponding route in the route table. Otherwise, even if those gateways or devices exist, your packets would not be routed towards them. So while understanding these gateways, you also need to understand that how to provide a route for them in the route table. So here it means that if I just edit this route table and delete this last route, then even if I have got instances which has public IP, they would never be able to connect to the internet in spite of an internet gateway attached to a VPC because there would be no route itself for the packet to reach internet gateway. And that is the significance of the route and that is the significance of the route table. So this route table and this routes would be associated to a particular subnet. So if it is a main route table, then by default, all the subnets would be associated with that route table. But if you are creating a custom route table, then you have to explicitly go and associate few subnets with this route table. An associated subnet means that all the instances or all the traffic coming from this subnet would follow this particular set of routes. Okay, so another important thing in the route table is that we see here the destination is given here like this as well as like this. So if an IP address which is start with something like 10.0.1.2 that is a subset of both the IP address ranges here. So whether that should belong to this one or whether it should follow this particular rule. That's the question. So for that, route table specifies that for any route, this destination would apply which is more specific. 
So if you are getting 10.0.1.2, even though that falls under the range of 0.0.0.0.0 slash 0, this particular rule will be applied because 10.0.0.0 is more closer to 10.0.1.2. So this is very important which route will apply to a particular packet that will depend on the specificity of this particular destination in the route. So then we have got route propagation which means suppose for a particular VPC gateway if you have enabled route propagation then that VPC gateway will automatically propagate all the VPN routes to the route table and you don't have to do that manually. Then the next is you have got again you can add tags to your route table like you can tag any other resource. So these are the basics of route table. Using route table you can control that which subnet is connected to which other subnet and how the traffic should flow inside the VPC as well as how should it be rerouted to go outside the VPC. To emphasize this once again, the route tables need to be edited every time you use some gateway like internet gateway, VPC gateway, NAT gateway, etc. So whenever you have got network issue, other than going and seeing security groups and access control list, you should also have a look on the present route tables and the routes which are there in those route tables. So hope you enjoyed the session. See you soon in the next video. Thank you for watching.